we're going to be starting our next game now, which is going to be Tetris. Classic shapes game. We're going to be doing mostly things involving basic blocks, rather than doing anything with sprites this time. I'm just going to create squares that have particular colors to create everything that we're going to need. So, to begin with, let us start with the four basic blocks and some of the walls that we need around the edges. So I'm going to create some game objects. By the way, all of this is the basic copy and paste of the base game that I've started from. So block one, block two, block three, and block four. And then I'm going to need a left wall, a bottom, and a right wall, and probably something in the center to divide kind of the play area from where the score is going to be. Let's do a wall left, a wall bottom, wall right, and, and I need something different in program, center. And let's try creating some of these things. So here I'm going to start in with the walls. So wall left is going to be a new game object. This is going to be from the upper left, so 0, 0. I'm going to make all my blocks 20 wide, just to make it fairly easy to exactly figure out where they're at. However, if I do them exactly 20 wide, that means that there would be basically a pixel of overlap each time on the very rightmost side of it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make them all 19 wide, but use spacings of 20 so that they won't overlap each other quite. And this will be 400 tall. I'll make it solid. So let's take a look at that. Okay, good. Let's do the right wall. So it's going to be a new game object. So this is going to be 600, so our game width. Minus 20, because that's what we're using for our block size. It's going to be up at the top of the screen, so that's the 0 and the Y position. It's going to be, well, I suppose on the right side it doesn't matter. Like, that can be 20 wide. And 400 tall. Okay, we have a left and a right side, so that's good. Next up, we need to do the bottom that goes across here, and then we'll have a center one that's about here, and we got to make sure we have a distance of 10 across, 10 sections of 20, because in Tetris, the number of columns you have is 10 columns. So wall, bottom, it's going to be a new game object. And this is going to go from 20 in, and then we're going to go across the bottom until we reach the other side. So we're going to be 20 up from the bottom. And then our width is going to be 600 minus 40. So our game width. And then we're going to have a height of 20. It was on the bottom, so I don't need to do the 19 here. Something I just realized I should probably do is use game height here, just in case for whatever reason I decide to change the game height later on. There we go. So I replaced those 400s with that. You're technically not allowed to you do that in the size command here, otherwise I would have. I would have made these constants up here at the top, and then just put those in. Processing doesn't like that. You have to actually put the numbers in yourself. So if you ever do decide to change the width and height, you actually have to change here and here. Oh, it looks like we do need to start one less. And now we need to go one more on the right. So our width is going to be 39. 
There we go, it goes across the bottom. All right, now we need to do the central piece. Well, we should probably make the bottom wall solid as well because we don't want any of our blocks to go through them. So now the wall center It's a new game object. All right, this thing. It's going to start just inside our left wall, and then we need to go 20 pixels over 10 times. So I'm just going to do the calculation this way. You could actually figure this out, and yes indeed, I recognize that this is 200. You could even just put 220 directly here instead of doing all these calculations. It's going to start at the top. It's going to be 20 wide, because we're not going to have anything on the right side of this other than text. And it's going to be 400, so game height, minus 20. There we go. So this will be the play area over here. And then this area is where I'm going to put things like score. And if you want to later on, you could put in future pieces, that kind of stuff. The next thing I'd like to do is to start figuring out what the Tetris pieces themselves are going to be. And I'd like to make it so that I have some constants that refer to which shape I currently have. So I'm going to add in an int, which is the current shape. And later on, I'm going to need rotation, so I'm going to just put that in now as well. Next, let's go ahead and make some constants that represent the different kinds of shapes we can have. So to begin with, I'm going to put these in all capitals. That's usually a sign that it's a constant. That's going to be my first piece is the straight piece. And then the block will be a number two. Technically, you could put in just a one or a two or a three or whatever the shape is. But it's a lot easier to tell if a shape is a straight by using the name straight as opposed to if a shape is a number three and trying to remember exactly what the three represents. Let's see. Next, we would have a T shape. And then there's those ones that are basically three in a row and then one up or down. So I'm going to call this an L shape. You know what, to make this easier, let's go ahead and actually draw out these shapes using comments. I'm going to do this a lot in this program just to try and make it more easily visualizable. So for the straight piece, it's basically going to be the three blocks in a row. So block one, two, three, four, and I'm going to do it in that order. Next up is the block. So it's just going to be a block like that. So next is the T shape, one, two, three, and then four down right below that. And then we have what I'm calling the L shape. Will look like this, where it's like a letter L. Let's see, what's next? I suppose we should do the inverse of that, which is more like a J. So something like this, where we have one, two... I'm going to do three, four this way. You can make these the inverse of each other. It's up to you, actually, where you place all these blocks, as long as you are consistent with the way you rotate them and whatnot. Let's see, that leaves two more shapes, so we need the two zigzag shapes. So I'm going to call one of them the S shape, and one of them the Z shape. So the S shape will look something like that, and the Z shape will look something like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's all seven of the shapes that we're going to be using in this game. 